If you're using low quality vinyl windows, there's something you can do to help save time and money over the long run. And that something is using Anderson 100 series products instead of vinyl. 100 series products are available at a similar price to vinyl, but made with Fibrex material that's twice as strong and holds up in high heat, even in dark colors. And unlike some other vinyl alternatives, 100 series products have a smooth and consistent finish. That's why you can trust Anderson 100 series products to be the smart alternative to vinyl. Learn more at andersonwindows.com slash pros. Uh, this comes from Dan. This is, an, this is a great question. Okay, here we go. Dan writes, uh, Dear Patrick and team, first off, thanks so much for the magazine and podcast. Y'all do great work and it's very much appreciated. We recently put in a bid for a job doing the framing for a straw bale home. The owners are very sustainably focused and looking through the plans. I notice a lot of details that are not what we are used to seeing as more conventional builders. I thought these make, make some good discussion topics for the podcast. The framing itself is fairly straightforward. It's a post and beam style two-story home with roof trusses on top. There's minimal sheathing, so shear strength is achieved through coil strapping diagonally to the posts and beams, all of which, which is covered with straw and plaster. But I digress. It's the other details I thought make good, might make good talking points. One is we're using a rubble trench foundation in place of concrete footing slash frost wall. A small concrete grade beam is to be placed on top under the bearing walls, but otherwise concrete is kept to a minimum. This obviously saves a lot of concrete work and the related CO2 emissions. It might even be cheaper and more DIY friendly to install, I would think, than a typical foundation. Are there major drawbacks I'm missing to rubble trench foundations or good reasons we don't see them much frequently? Second, uh, instead of a typical insulated concrete slab, they specced gravel, which is foam glass insulation topped with a vapor barrier and three layers of adobe, a third coat of adobe being the finished floor. I'm not sure what it's like to source adobe in different parts of the country. We're in northern New York, uh, I'm and there, I have no idea where they'll get it but I think it's a neat slab alternative. Do you know much about the pros and cons uh, of Adobe floors? Lastly, I'd love to hear your thoughts on straw bale homes in general. As a conventional-ish builder, it's always satisfying to frame and sheath stud walls per usual and install wood or was wood to borrow a term from Joe Steebrook siding, but there is certainly something beautiful about a smooth plaster exterior and interior on thick walls, especially at curved window and door returns. And though, and though I know you guys will bring it up, I'm not even going to mention how airtight a house with three layers of plaster inside and out should be. Though stacking bales and plastering is not a skill set I really long to develop, I do appreciate the simplicity and the sustainability of the straw bale approach. I'm excited to hear your thoughts on this construction method. And again, why isn't it more prevalent? Thanks again for everything. My wife laughs at me, but I'm always looking forward to Fridays to catch up on the latest episode of the podcast. Cheers, Dan. Well, thanks, Dan. Okay, Ian. So what do we <laughs> think about straw bale construction? We'll start with this and then we'll get to the other points later. Yeah. What do you think about straw bale construction, Ian? So up until I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago, I would have just thoroughly rejected it as even an, an option that anyone should consider. But as part of being in Plan Big with Dan Colbert, uh, Nessie, I got to meet the people at New Frameworks in Burlington, Vermont, who do a really great job with uh, straw bale panel homes. So they make these panel units that have the straw bales in them. They have their little factory floor set up and they can ship these panels out and they are modular. And I think they do a really great job in building a structure. Now, Myself, I'm light wood platform framing all the way because it's what I grew up doing. It's what I understand. It's what I can believe that I can do efficiently, but that doesn't discount other building methods, be it straw bale, rammed earth or cob or any of the other uh, kind of different European systems out there. There are people that know how to do them. And as long as you're working with an expert, I don't think you should uh, should feel hesitant and go in that direction. What do you think, Randy? I've I've actually only run into one in my career. Um, it was on an energy audit, and it was 
you know, at the time, I think 15, 20 years old, and it seemed to be doing well. I think I couldn't see that the, the, the homeowners weren't complaining about the, that type of a, a construction method. They had other issues going on, but uh, other than being so rare in my market, uh, I think they can be a, a really effective way to build. Again, like Ian said, uh, making sure that you're working with an expert, somebody that it's not their first time doing this or somebody that re at least really researches and brings in somebody that's done a bunch of them to help on a first first home build for out of this method. I'll say for myself, uh, like Ian, I was convinced by new frameworks before that, like anyone who, you know, is familiar with light wood frame construction, uh, you, you, you worry about, you know, straw and walls getting wet and, uh, you know, making a, a terrible moldy mess, but done correctly, it seems awesome. I, I got to agree. Uh, like Ian says, get the right person because it could go horribly wrong. I admire Dan for uh, his uh, open-mindedness to, to, to take this on. Uh, and, you know, I would tell Dan to pay attention to water management. And uh, uh, I do this, wonder, though, is, is Dan a timber framer? I gather. Why? So if he's just going to put up the timber, he doesn't really have anything to do necessarily with this. So from Dan's perspective, I get the impression that this is a pretty standard project for him. And that it's the things that come after him that he's finding are uh, different or out of the ordinary. Join us this September 18th and 19th at the beautiful Endicott College campus in Beverly, Massachusetts for the Fine Home Building Summit, where the best minds in residential design and construction come together. This premier two-day event is all about elevating the way we design, build, and run successful, inspiring construction businesses. You'll hear from some of the most respected leaders in the industry as they share insights on the future of home building. You experience engaging sessions, interactive roundtable discussions, supplier exhibits, and hands-on networking. We'll also be recording a fine home building podcast live from the summit floor. Head over to summit.finehomebuilding.com to register today. Use the promo code FHB Podcast for $50 off the two day all access ticket. Can't wait to see you there. I'm going to say good plans are going to be key because I'm, I'm guessing that there are details uh, potentially that Dan would do differently with a straw bale sure. house with some uh, compared to other, some uh, enclosure method, right? And a, a sizable contingency war chest of money. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't you say that for any project ian you could but this one's got so many different layers and adobe floor and gravel which uh, maybe randy you can tell me what what gravel goes for right now but at one point i think it was cheaper to insulate your floor with hundred dollar bills <laughs> than uh, trying to use gravel <laughs> maybe it's come down in cost i think it's still uh, a a little tough to get in areas, because as far as I know, the only plant is in New England someplace, and to ship it across the country is what I think driving a lot of the cost. Uh, but, yeah. I want to talk about the rubble foundation because... Yeah, I know you do, Patrick. <laughs> I, I love this idea. I love digging rocks and pile them in, uh, in trenches. Uh, what's not to love? I mean, barns have been built this way for centuries, right? And yeah. Ian's nodding. Out here in the sticks, we got tons of them that are sitting on rubble foundations and doing just fine. The only hundreds uh, of years later problem is water management, right? They they're very porous to to bulk water, so yeah. And you end up with a very large trench, uh, from what I looked up online of some current uh, thought leadership in the rubble foundation world. Oh, do share. You need a, you need a pretty <laughs> need a pretty wide trench. What three feet? Uh, yeah, that was the standard that I saw was a, a three foot trench. And then there was some good uh, water management and drainage uh, work at the bottom of the trench. And then you do have to compact it as it goes up. And my market, that ahead, trench is, I said in my market, that trench is five feet deep. Yeah. To, to Which tells me it's got to be wider than three feet at that point, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. And in my market, it would be four feet deep. So you'd be looking at a three by four and probably by Randy, I would assume you were looking at a four by five trench. 
I think this would be fine if you were in a place with a lot of glacial till. Uh, and you're, if you're in some parts of the Midwest, you're, are you going to find the rocks in the soil to, to do this? Uh, no, Ian's shaking his head. Yeah. And I think there's even, it's got to be clean. Yeah. Isn't it, the, the rock? Say that so again. It's, not something you can, it's got to be clean. It's not something you're going to pull off their site. You're going to have it trucked in to, to put in. It's got to be washed. Wait a minute. Why can't you just take the rocks from where you, you're, you're building? Uh, they're, I think they're specified at a specific size. I think an inch and a half is yeah. what they're looking for is a crushed stone. It, at least the stuff that I mm. saw online. Um, I could be wrong. But... No, I'm... Yeah, you're, you're looking at bringing in washed gravel to do this. I say that's a lot like concrete, if I could uh, make that observation. Uh, the, the only difference is the Portland cement, right? I, I think you're on to something there, Patrick. Hmm. And now we're making it three foot wide. Uh, upstate New York could be uh, probably four, certainly be three four. and a half yeah. feet deep, right? Hmm. Seems like a good idea until you start thinking about the cubic feet of uh, rock you need. And I, I wasn't aware you needed something uh, imported. I, I really want Dan to uh, keep us abreast of what happens with this project and if it gets built on spec or not. I think you I think, think this Dan, might be value engineered is what I'm. Oh, getting. this is screaming for value. engineering. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that's going to get value engineered out is the Adobe floor in northern New York when they can't <laughs> find anyone to do it or supply it. Fly uh, somebody in from New Mexico. Right. Yeah. yeah. Martin do you have Holiday. any rammed earth houses up by you, Randy? There's, there's a handful Randy of lives them in one. dotted. There's a handful of them dotted around here. I've recently found out. Really? Uh, yeah. Owner built. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's the only way that works, right? Yeah. I admire the folks that do that because I've seen the process, and uh, it looks like hundreds of hours of backbreaking work. I mean, it literally looks like it would kill you. What do you think of that adobe floor, Patrick? Is that screaming out for some in-floor heat in, um, in the adobe? So Martin Holiday made the observation in a green building blog, and maybe uh, Randy can send that to me and I'll put it on the podcast page, that folks in the developing world, the first thing they want is a concrete floor. And they want to abandon their mud floors because it is a maintenance problem. And, uh, you know, I think... The idea of things is often better than living with them. And, and uh, my experience camping uh, is, uh, reinforces that kind of uh, mentality that I'm talking about. Like, it's a great idea and concept until you're lying on the dirt. That's, that's why these houses that get pulled behind tra uh, trucks are, are so popular. Nobody wants to sleep in a tent anymore. They, they buy a little <laughs> house and they pull it to an RV lot and park it yes. there. Getting the a original shower tiny house. and yeah. sleeping in a bed is, is far <laughs> better. Yeah. yeah. Air conditioning, refrigerator. Yeah, I can't beat it. Uh, I would point out that straw bale builds are in the IRC, uh, and uh, it tells me that it's not completely loopy if it's if it's been accepted by folks who uh, decide that what we're building is safe or not. Yeah, the, the one thing to be aware of, too, with the with straw bale is that it is an appendix. So it's not in the main code. It's in the appendix part of the, the, the code book. And that has to be specifically adopted in your area. Not all appendixes are, are adopted throughout the country. So something to be aware of. You know, to the point Dan Colbert was making last week, uh, carbon sequestering, uh, you know, I'm hard pressed to think of a better example uh, with low embodied energy yep. and uh, carbon storing potential. You know, the, the often cited example is uh, cellulose insulation, but I, I think a carbon accounting might put this even lower than cellulose because you have to make newspaper first. Right. Would you guys build one of these for yourself? I mean, uh, uh, the appeal, I think we all agree, is that they look amazing, but boy, it seems like a hard way to build a house. Ian, go ahead. I would not do one for myself because I wouldn't trust myself in doing it. Uh, you so don't I, have I gotta to stick with what yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Randy? Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the uh, platform framing, traditional insulation, and I, I, I'd be much more comfortable using things that I'm aware of than, than trying to move to something new. 
Well, as always, thanks for being here, team. It's uh, been a good conversation, and I want to thank all of the podcast listeners who wrote into the show. We really do appreciate it. But unfortunately, Dan, keep us keep us up to date on that job, Dan. We we want photos. We want to know what's going on with that uh, Adobe floor and Rebel Foundation. Don't leave us hanging. I think any folks who have uh, what I would describe as low embodied energy uh, builds should tell us how they're doing it and uh, uh, the details because, you know, I think there's a built in skepticism amongst folks who are familiar with the ways we've been building houses for 100 years now. <laughs>